See, in the last few days, about a week now, eh, your our NLC protest uh, protesters were on. Uh, were they everywhere in the country, or was it just a, a particular region of the country? What what was going on? Well, uh, basically, as far as I know, um, the protest basically took place more um, in Abuja. Uh, okay. I, I don't know how much the impact was in Lagos, but um, I, I'm not privy to that information. Okay. But I knew that there were pockets of protests in Abuja. Mm. Okay, okay. So it's, yes. it's not as a, as a widespread as... as... What? I saw, I saw on 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 the internet, you know, yeah, okay, okay. So let let's start from the beginning, you know, the protest and all that yeah, comes, yeah, from, I mean, uh, comes from uh, yeah. the removal of uh, first subsidy and then floating the cur the currency. So tell us. What's your what's your view about that first subsidy removal? Okay, let me start this way. I really don't have anything against the fuel subsidy, right? Um, in this sense, don't let me say I don't have anything against the fuel subsidy. Uh, prior to now, we have noticed that uh, based on statistics, we the country has lost a lot of money. Uh, from fuel subsidy sponsorship, let me put it that way. Mm. And that has been due to the fact that there have been fraudulent claims, especially those who will not even bring the commodity into our shores, but tender documents to claim subsidy from government. Mm. And that has actually um, gulped millions of Nigerian Naira, uh, money that was supposed to have been used for infrastructure and stuff like that. So the fuel price uh, has been uh, reaching the common man for approximately 145 or thereabouts prior to the removal of, subs of subsidy. But after the removal of subsidy, obviously everything skyrocketed because we, we are now um, in thin and um, you know it's going to be based on international rates, international standards, and all that stuff. So that is given. Things are bound to change. But on the flip side, government is supposed to have extra money to attend to infrastructure, projects, and um, obviously things, the ODOMs that um, siphon German money into their own private pockets from doing that. Now, that aspect of the subsidy removal, I agree with. But what I don't agree with is this. If you are removing subsidy, there should be change management strategies that should be in place. What do I mean by change management strategy? Any policy change obviously has attendant consequences. And those consequences would include hardship on the populace because it will affect how much they get the product from the fuel station. It will have a ripple effect on small businesses that are dependent on fuel to power generators. It will affect the common man that is on 30,000 naira per month when he's going to work with public transportation. It will have a ripple effect on all aspects of our micro and macro economics as a whole. What I expected the government to do is first do a reasonable forecast of the consequences of their actions and attend to how to, you know, mitigate those ripple effects so that the impact on the average man collecting 30,000 Naira per month will not be that grievous. Because when you even look at 30,000 Naira per month at the present exchange rate right now, the exchange rate was as high as 2,000, close to 2,000 Naira to a dollar. It just got down to about 1,500 right now, right? Of recent, I think yesterday and today. 
when we even look at 1,500 per dollar, you can imagine somebody earning 30,000 per, per month. That means that person is earning, earning about around, around $20 in the whole month. And fuel subsidy has been removed. Consumer index is off the roof. Inflation rate is off the roof. How do they manage? That's the big question. We actually ended up putting the horse, I'm sorry, the cat before the horse on this decision. That's mm -hmm. my take. Mm -hmm. See, all these things uh, that we are going through in our country uh, is a lot more difficult because the things that are cost causing it has been we have been uh, subsid subsidizing for decades. Uh, for me, first subsidy should have been removed a long time ago. And before then, before then, our country should have uh, pri privatized our uh, refineries so that, yes, yes. You know why I'm laughing when you said that? Why? Okay, let me explain something to you. It's just like having a problem with transportation mm. and um, in your house you have a Volkswagen Beetle mm. of 1975 model mm. which constantly develops problem yeah the technology is actually very difficult to get in terms of spare parts and all that stuff it still uses okay. contact sets Okay. I hope you can remember when your dad yeah. was using yes. contact center. My mom was yes. using contact center as yes. well. Mm -hmm. Very good. I am sure a lot of people do not even know. A lot of Gen Z do not even know what contact set is. They, they, they don't know anything. <laughs> exactly. So, how would you say you are repairing a Volkswagen Beetle of 1969 or 1970? Have a problem of transportation. Yeah. Would you not rather scrap that technology and build new ones? How many years did it cost Dangote to finish his own refinery in Lagos? See. How many years will it cost Boa Group to finish their own refinery in, um, in I think it's in the east or the middle belt that they are building theirs? You see, you cannot continue whipping a dead horse and expecting it to run. It doesn't you're, make sense. You're me. It's not pragmatic. You're, I you're will me. never support privatization of those refineries. No, I'll, no, no. I would no. rather stop them. No, 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 no. I disagree. See, the gov for me, the government has no reason even to have those refineries in the first place. Those things should have been private from the get to I agree. Okay. So I agree. so see using your ana analogy that the technology is old. The government should not spend one cent. Exactly. What, yeah. See if they have just sold it, whoever buys it will do what needs to be done. Exactly. Okay. So exactly. See, they should have they should have sold those they have made the mistake of having those re refineries which was who have been that have been gulping massive resources Billions. okay the same thing about uh Ajakuta, right see, still complex yes it's still complex that we'll be building 
since uh, 1979 or 80, right? Till today, till today, no one ton of uh, steel has been made. Has been produced. Place. Okay, and yet they, they are even. They are, I even read something recently. I don't have the full details. That Jakuta is going to be probed, or is probably under probe presently, oh see, because I'll, they are pouring so much money, and no value has come out of it. See, I heard where they build that plant is so far away from the source of the of the of the raw of materials the raw material for the steel. I mean, see. We 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 invest in so many ridiculous white elephant projects. Okay, see this this, this that so many things we have done in our country that doesn't make any sense at all. Exactly, and we are still doing it now. So if we have sold those dollar guzzling refineries maybe 25 years ago, by now, it would have taken them, the, the whoever bought those refineries, maybe maximum five years to refurbish them and put them online to be producing. That means for the last 20 years, we have been spending money for square sub subsidy and we have been spending money to revitalize those refineries. So much money that the country should never have spent on those exactly. items. Exactly. And yet, nothing has come out of it. So for me, sure. see, I've, I've argued this a long, for a long time ago, okay? We have been wasting resources and getting absolutely nothing for them. Okay? So for me, sure. the, the first of subsidy needed to go, but like you said, uh, we did it the wrong way, okay. And it's not it's not uh, anything new for us. We always do things the wrong way. 